Happy New Year. It's New Year's Day back down here in the Blanco Lirio affiliate office in Sydney, Australia for my third and final trip down here to Sydney for the month. And this will be the last Sydney trip for a while as it goes off our schedule until uh, March or so later on this year. So returning to trips to London after this. Uneventful flight for us coming down to Sydney last night, but a rather eventful flight for United's flight 836, a 787 had to divert into Pago Pago on its flight from Los Angeles to Sydney, Australia. And this is an excellent example of ETOPS extended twin engine operations, emergency procedures. What do you do if you lose an engine over the South Pacific? Let's check it out. Let's start with Simon Radecki at the Aviation Herald. A United Boeing 787-900 registration November 38955 performing flight as United Airlines Flight 839 departed December 29th from LA to Sydney was en route at flight level 380 about 960 nautical miles north of Pago Pago, American Samoa when the crew needed to shut down the right hand engine due to, a, due to suspecting an engine oil leak. The aircraft turned south, drifted down to flight level 200, and diverted to Pago Pago for a safe landing after about two and a half hours later. That's a long time to be floating around out there on one engine. United reported a replacement aircraft being dispatched to Pago Pago from Sydney. They took the Sydney-Houston flight, apparently, and uh, canceled that, sent them instead to Pago Pago, rescued the, uh, <laughs> rescued the passengers, uh, and then flew them back here to Sydney, uh, getting to Sydney, I think, 20, some 22 hours later than their original planned arrival time. So the passengers got a little bit of a tour of the island of Pago Pago. They were able to drink some beer on the beach and get a shower in the hangar before resuming their trip. So let's check out how this works technically with the pilots and the airplane itself. So here's the flight plan of our flight last night from LA to Sydney. You basically hang a right, you hang a, a left hand turn departing out of Los Angeles and fly the airway almost directly down here to Sydney. Remember, it's these rings here that make the extended twin engine operation flight planning possible. These are 180 minute rings or basically three hour rings that allow you to stay within the limitations of extended twin engine operations. As long as you can flight plan to stay within these rings, you can do this flight. Pago Pago is located right down here and is in the center of this 180 minute ring. And this problem occurred right about a thousand miles north of Pago Pago. So that means that this crew is working through the Hawaii ring first, their, their first suitable alternate after taking off from Los Angeles. At some point between LA and Hawaii is Hawaii, then Hawaii is your alternate for a very long time until you get closer to Pago Pago. So this incident must have happened about a thousand miles north of Pago Pago, would have put them right about there, just closer to Pago Pago than to Hawaii, close enough to make Pago Pago the alternate the suitable alternate airport for their emergency. As soon as you have this emergency, you have to land as soon as conditions permit. No, we're not going to fly five and a half miles or five and a half hours on one engine just so you can see the fireworks in Sydney. The FAA requires us to land at the nearest suitable airport. And in this case, we want to land at the nearest suitable ETOPS qualified airport. It's got good runway and a long enough runway and enough capability on the ground to handle the 300 passengers that are about to um, descend upon your island. So you're on this airway or maybe you're on one of these parallel track systems and you lose an engine and you need to, what's the first thing you need to do is you need to go down. But you need to go down safely without hitting anybody else that may possibly be around you out on that track. Remember this is a non-radar environment so we got a plan for that. So instead of just hitting the divert button and diverting directly to your airport, you should first at least get 30 degrees off of the heading of your track, go five miles offset of the track, and then turn to parallel your track, and then begin your descent 
on down safely off of the track and away from other aircraft. In the meantime, you're um, communicating on VHF radio, which you already have up uh, on 121.5, the emergency frequency, and on fingers, 12345, to any other aircraft that may be in close VHF range as to what you're doing. Of course, you've got your TCAS, your traffic collision avoidance system, to see if there's anybody out there. Generally, there's nobody out here in the South Pacific at night. Turn your lights on transponder and start your descent, transponder to emergency. Now that we've safely gotten off the track, we got to figure out what altitude and what airspeed are we going to fly at. Well, this is a, an ETOPS operation, so we need to get down to a habitable altitude for the single engine operation, but we also need to select a speed that keeps us legal for extended twin engine operations. So, so that's a different speed than maybe your best performance single engine speed and altitude. Instead, in order to make those 180 uh, minute rings work, you have to maintain an ETOP speed in the case of the 787 of 0.85 Mach or 310 knots to make that 180 minute ring requirement. In other words, you gotta speed up a bit faster than you normally would on a single engine. Besides, you don't wanna be hanging around out over the water that long on one engine. You wanna to get to your ETOPS alternate. So, so you're gonna select your ETOPS speed, and now since you're selecting your ETOPS speed, a little faster speed, that's gonna require a little bit lower altitude than your basic single engine habitable altitude in order to maintain the speed to get to your ETOPS alternate. Now, where are we gonna go? How are we gonna get to our alternate? Well, if you go to the computer and push the alternate button, it's gonna pull up your, forest, your four nearest alternate airports. And I took a picture here at this one because this is right when you're at the edge between whether it's gonna be Hawaii or Pago Pago for your alternate airport as you're just right right in in between the two of them there. And this one says, well, why don't you go to Christmas Island? No, we're not gonna go to Christmas Island unless we're on fire. We gotta make a decision. So we turn to a thing called a diversion guide, which we've already have out. We've been looking at it all the way down here and we're evaluating these alternates, the entire flight down here. And you can see they're broken up into destination, adequate or emergency. Christmas Island is an emergency alternate only. So Pago Pago looks like a good alternate plan. And if we look up Pago Pago for the 787, we can see that yes, they have fueling capability and it is in fact an ETOPS alternate. They've got 10,000 feet of runway. They've got medical services available. And then we look it up on the JEPS, we can see that they've got a good instrument approach and we already have, because we've been doing this all the way down there, we know that the weather is good for this alternate airport. If we take a quick look back at Christmas Island, um, there it's emergency only, there's no medical, there's only 6,800 feet of runway. And if we look closer at the approach plate or the Jepson plate for Christmas Island, you can see it's just 6,900 feet, no taxiway, really no way to get the aircraft turned around once you get down there. There's really no way to get the people off of the aircraft once you get down there, but at least they got some lights on. Pago Pago, though, has the 10,000 foot runway. They've got a good instrument approach uh, to runway five. I've uh, had the opportunity to fly in there quite a bit uh, in the 141, back in the 141 days out at uh, Travis Air Force Base. And um, it is surrounded by mountainous terrain. And that's what, what I remember um, coming in there back in the 141 days is we would land there uh, before the sun came up, well before the sun. So it was just a black, black hole. And you're coming in on this ILS on runway five. And one of the things I always remember is the, the surf coming splashing up over the, the runway here. And then the, as you taxi in and park, the sun would come up and then you'd see the surrounding mountainous terrain go and you would, uh, that would definitely get your attention that you're definitely in, in a mountainous terrain airport in the middle of the <laughs> Pacific Ocean. And then finally, how do you notify everybody as to what you're up to? Just pull up the emergency report on the CPDLC, the cockpit uh, 
data link system, which runs through the sat satellite phone system, and it'll it'll see that you're once you program the FMS for your diversion, it'll start filling in these fields, telling telling the everybody where you're going to, how much fuel you've got on board, how many folks are on board, what the nature of your emergency is. Hit that button, blast it out there. Now everybody knows what you're up to, and hopefully the folks at Pago Pago or folks can start coordinating with the folks at Pago Pago for your arrival in a couple of hours to meet you at the aircraft and help you get the folks off of the airplane and then figure out where you're going to go from there once you've landed. Most folks probably went straight to the bar. Meanwhile, continue to keep your uh, weather radar on and poke your way through the weather as you make your way to your emergency alternate destination. One of the questions that came up in one of the previous episodes is what if the weather goes below minimums at one of your ETOPS alternate airports? Well, then you're going to have to find another suitable ETOPS alternate airport to add to your flight plan. And this is where the dispatcher, the folks behind the scenes, are constantly working, staying with you throughout the entire flight. They're watching the weather just as you are as you progress along on your flight plan there. And if something goes below minimums, there's a change to the flight plan. You're going to work it out directly with the dispatcher to make the necessary adjustments. And they're going to double check the fuel load and make sure that it all works to keep you either A, going to your destination or diverting if you have to. So that's a quick and dirty overview of ETOPS operation and emergency diverts. Extended twin engine operations, or as we say in the business, engines turn or people swim. Uh, I did have an engine failure years ago coming back from Honolulu, or from Hawaii, it wasn't Honolulu. And uh, we did spend a good hour and 45 minutes out there contemplating life on one engine and made a very uneventful arrival back straight back into Los Angeles. So the system works. That's a little brief overview of how the system works and how we keep it all legal and safe. Thanks so much for your support of this channel, especially the folks over on Patreon that make this content possible. See you here.